In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to this celebration of the Eucharist on the Feast of the Epiphany. Today we remember and celebrate that glorious revealing to us in the visit of the wise men to the Holy Family and the gifts that they brought to Christ our Lord. And so let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people as his own. Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the prophecy of Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 72 
The response to the psalm is, The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. The kings of Tarshish and of the Isle shall pay tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba shall bring gifts. All kings fall down before him, all nations shall do him service. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. For he shall deliver the poor that cry out, the needy and those who have no helper. He shall have pity on the weak and the poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence. And dear shall their blood be in his sight. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Long may he live. Unto him may be given gold from Sheba. May prayer be made for him continually. And may they bless him all the day long. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations, and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men, and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Good morning from me. Welcome to our second week of the Christmas season as we celebrate the birth of Christ together. People approach Christmas preparations in very different ways, don't they? It was harder than normal to prepare, of course, this year because of Covid, but I still noticed that people were true to type and some of my friends and family had everything ready weeks before the big day and others hadn't posted a single card or got anything organised at all. And if you're someone who likes doing their Christmas preparations early, let me tell you, there are now just 355 sleeps until Christmas 2021. So feel free to start planning. When was it do you think that God started preparing for Christmas? You might say it was about nine months beforehand, maybe, when the angel Gabriel visited Mary to tell her she's going to have a baby. Maybe we'll go a bit further back, 700 years beforehand, when God spoke through the prophet Isaiah to foretell the coming of the Prince of Peace. 
Well, the gospel reading we have this morning, John 1 verses 10 onwards, tells us that God had been preparing for Christmas for far longer than the nine months of pregnancy or even seven centuries. Our reading zooms out to give us the wide angle lens on the whole story and shows us amazingly that God had been preparing for Christmas since before the beginning of time itself. The perspective that John gives us on Christmas is amazing. If you can have a Bible open in front of you as we look at these verses together, that'd be brilliant. The Gospel of John, chapter one. And at the start of his book, he's introduced us to Jesus, not by describing angels and shepherds and wise men. He starts not with the crib, but with the cosmos. John says, this Jesus, he was with God the Father from the beginning of time. He was the word, the self-expression of God. And he was a person, not a philosophy or a force, but the agent of creation. Verse 10, the world came into being through Jesus. It's a phenomenal perspective. From the beginning of time, as the world is made with and through and for Jesus, the stage is being set millions of years in advance of the first Christmas day. And John goes on to explain that even though the world didn't recognise or accept Jesus, he became flesh, verse 14, and dwelt among us. And John has chosen his words very carefully here in verse 14. Our English translations aren't great. The word for dwelt or lived among us, John says that Jesus became flesh and pitched his tent among us, encamped in our midst. So from zooming out to Jesus being with the Father and the agent of creation at the beginning of time, we zoom in to Bethlehem, a baby boy, God become human. He's decided to pitch his tent to leave the throne room of heaven and set up camp in the midst of human life. It's a little bit too cold outside for camping at the moment, but are you someone who likes life in a tent in the summer? People are generally divided on those who love or loathe camping. But imagine an enormous campsite, maybe like a summer festival like Glastonbury. Everyone's pitched their tents, hundreds and thousands all crammed in together. John says God became a human being and pitched his tent right here in the middle of us. Now at events like Glastonbury you, you get a sort of uh, great succession of VIP superstar performers and all the regular hoi polloi they camp in the fields but the, the celebrities and superstars have a sort of village of luxury motorhomes with electricity and hot water and amazing food. The Bible shows us that when Jesus came, he didn't arrive as a VIP superstar, not, not a life of celebrity or royalty or luxury. He set up camp with an ordinary family to live and work in the real world. He wasn't protected from poverty or politics or pain, but vulnerable and exposed to all of human life. So given that awesome perspective on Christmas, what we learn in our reading is the purpose of Christmas. Well, if you've ever been camping, you'll know that if someone pitches their tent next to yours, it's a very close relationship. It's quite a revealing experience of each other. You know what these people next door are having for dinner. You can smell it. You can often smell them, depending on how good the wash block is. And you can hear all their conversations and indeed uh, their arguments. You can hear when they go to bed and when they start shouting at their children for not going to bed. And uh, you sometimes even see them sort of running in their pyjamas to the toilet if first thing in the morning. There's nothing hidden when you're camping right next to each other. In verse 18, John writes that no one has ever seen God. He's been hidden from view for all of human history. But here at the incarnation, the invisible has become visible. There's nothing at all hidden about God anymore. Everything about his character, every word of his will, everything we'd ever want to know about his nature and life, he has pitched up right beside us and is fully on show for all to see and know. And John says he is glorious, truly glorious. Verse 14 to 17, because what we find in Jesus is perfect grace and perfect truth. When God shows us his full self, he is pure truth. And that truth can be uncomfortable for us because we're so far from what is true and just and good. Without exception, we all make choices that reject the truth of God as we turn inwards to our own selfishness and sin. 
Jesus lives in a way that doesn't just show God for who God really is, but shows us up for how we've fallen from who we're meant to be. The glory of God is both beautiful and dangerous. The beauty and perfection of his nature shows how greatly we've sinned in thought, word and deed. But Jesus doesn't leave us falling and failing. He is grace and truth. Verse 16, from his fullness we've received grace upon grace. John says a lot of people don't accept or recognise Jesus. But for those who do receive and believe in him, he pours out grace, undeserved forgiveness and favour bringing us to new life as members of God's family forever. This God leaves heaven to come to earth and he does so because he's on a rescue mission to save us from ourselves. He shows up in the truth of his glory and our sin, lays his glory down, takes our sin on him in the most extraordinary exchange on the cross. And as we trust him, we're adopted into God's family as his children to enjoy life with him forever. It can't happen because of any effort on our part, but just trusting in the greatest gift of all, the saving grace of Jesus. So I hope that some time today you'll make uh, an opportunity to look again at this piece of scripture and see this cosmic scale of the Christmas story, the creator who pitches his tent right next to us, and to see it ourselves in the light of this truth, that instead of condemning us for how far we've fallen, Jesus invites us to receive his saving grace. And it's not just true for people in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. It's true and real for us today. By Jesus' spirit, he's in the business of pitching up to, to be beside us, to live with us, to meet us in our mess, in our poverty and politics and pain, through a pandemic, grief and loss in every moment of joy and every single struggle. He comes to us, the glory of the Father, through the Son, grace upon grace. So now stretched out before us are 355 sleeps until next Christmas and we don't know what's in store. But would you put your trust in the living God, in the God who is grace and truth. And as the coming months unfold, know that he's willing to bring his grace and truth to every moment of this year. And may we have eyes to see his glory as he encamps among us and courage to live as his children in a world that doesn't receive or recognise him. Oh, come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. God's blessing on you all, this Christmas and for the year ahead. Amen. And so let us affirm our belief in God in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Today the wise men knelt before our Saviour. Let us also kneel to worship him with great joy and to make our prayer to his heavenly Father. 
Father, the wise men came from the East to worship your Son. Grant to Christians everywhere a true spirit of adoration. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your Son is the King of kings and Lord of lords. Grant an abundance of peace to your world. Lord, in your mercy. Father, the Holy Family shared the life of the people of Nazareth. Protect in your mercy our neighbours and families, together with the whole community of which we are part. Lord, in your mercy. Father, your son was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor. Show your love for the poor and powerless, and strengthen all those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Father, the wise men presented your son gold, incense and myrrh. Accept the gifts we bring and the offering of our hearts at the beginning of this new year. Lord, in your mercy. Father, you are the King of heaven, the hope of all who trust in you. Give to all the faithful departed the wonders of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Rejoicing in the fellowship of wise men, shepherds and angels, and of the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph, we commend ourselves and all people to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Saviour Christ is the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there shall be no end. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All honour and praise be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. For at this time we celebrate your glory made present in our midst. In the coming of the Magi, 
the King of all the world, was revealed to the nations. In the waters of baptism, Jesus was revealed as the Christ, the Saviour sent to redeem us. In the water made wine, the new creation was revealed at the wedding feast. Poverty was turned to riches, sorrow into joy. Therefore, with all the angels of heaven, we lift our voices to proclaim the glory of your name and sing our joyful hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Blessed Virgin Mother of God, St. Richard, St. Thomas of Becket, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Believing the promises of God, let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. the bright splendour whom the nations seek. May we who with the wise men have been drawn by your light discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies, to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you for joining us in prayer for this service of the Eucharist. I do hope that you are keeping safe and well at home, and I thank you for joining us in worship in this way 
so that we can all continue to keep safe. If you are in any kind of need, please do not hesitate to be in touch with me. I'm looking forward to hearing from you during these weeks when we are separated. Um, and, and I encourage you to check our uh, Pews News and Weekly Sheets for up-to-date information on our services that are happening in person and the other ways that you can join in worship. The Lord be with you. Christ, the Son of God, perfect in you the image of his glory, and gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.